In a world where we have multiple ranges of large language models that vary in size, data, and cost, it's quite hard to decide which LM would be best suited for real-world applications. You would also need to consider the costing structure, source of the APIs, and many other factors that cause a headache. Not only is it hard to configure, but it requires a lot of time and energy to actually link and connect the large language models. This is where I would like to introduce to you RESTGPT, a recently developed framework that allows you to connect large language models with real-world applications via RESTful APIs. This is a game changer as an LM-based autonomous agent is controlling real-world applications through this RESTful API framework and it's constructed and composed through RESTGBT. I'm quite shocked as a lot of people don't actually know about this as this is something that is open source and free to use at this current moment. Just take a look at this example where it demonstrates using a movie database to search the total number of movies directed by a famous actor, Sophia. Now RESTGPT's framework is something that sources through the best APIs to find the best fit of API that is needed for this given prompt by the user. And what it does is that it then executes the task after sourcing it and it works to generate the response that is tasked through the API that is best fit for this single prompt given by the user. Now RESTGPT is something that adopts an iterative course defined online planning framework. It's something that allows LMs to gradually find the appropriate API and complete the program execution in its set program executor. This whole process is somewhat similar to the breadth first algorithm, which is a first find the API set and then find the detailed API framework. This is something that then uses LMs to basically focus on reasoning capabilities to combine multiple APIs in an actual call chain. Now, after carefully reading through the research paper, there was something that I saw about this framework, and that is that it requires the input of API documents and response schema information. And this is something that actually affects it by a 10 to about 160% better than that of React, Reflection, and other frameworks, including comparisons with even ChatGPT. I looked at the project code that corresponded to the paper in detail, and it's something that mainly relies on prompt and loop execution to complete the actual task planning. Now, this implementation process is relatively simple, but the prompt is too complicated to actually write. This idea is something worth learning from, and in actual use, it is recommended that you actually rewrite the code yourself when you're executing different types of APIs through RESTGPT. Now, throughout today's video, this is something that we're going to be uncovering as we go further into the video by exploring RESTGPT in detail, showcasing evaluation metrics, as well as showcasing how you can get started by installing it locally on your computer. So with that thought guys, stay tuned and let's get straight into the video. I highly recommend that you join our private discord by checking out the Patreon link in the description below. We have a lot of different things going down here where you can get investment opportunities, you have free subscriptions to AI tools, consulting, networking calls, you have various different AI news being delivered to you on a daily, you have various resources given to you, and so much more. If you're interested in any of this, definitely take a look at this because I'm continuously building this community and I'm also continuously giving the best value on a weekly basis so definitely stay tuned with this so you can get the best out of our discord by checking out the patreon link in the description below if you would like to book a one-on-one -on -one with me where you can access my consulting services where i can help you grow your business or basically give you a lot of different types of solutions with ai definitely take a look at the calendar link in the description below Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video at the world of AI. In today's video, we're going to take a look at RESTGPT, which focuses on creating smart systems that uses large language model to connect and control real world applications like a movie database or a music player. To make this happen, the system basically links the language model with RESTful's APIs, and this is a way for your different software applications to actually communicate. The project is something that tackles the practical challenges of planning what the system should do in a smarter way by making calls to the API and understanding the response it actually gets. 
Now, to measure how well RushGPT is actually able to perform, the team was able to actually develop a testing system called RestBench. Now, this test is something that we're going to take a look at in the research paper, but it's something that includes real world scenarios along with human written instructions with correct paths for the system to follow. Now, the goal is to thoroughly evaluate how effectively RestGPT can handle these tasks so that you're able to control and give the prompts that are needed to use the RESTful API to get a better control of real world applications as well as using it to get the best APIs that are needed to execute various different types of tasks. Just take a look at this example over here where it's using RESTful's APIs to connect Spotify for the best uh, instruction given from the response from a user. So in this case, the user gave this response, play the album, bury the hatchet, and we can see that the robot then, or not the robot, but the RESTGPT chatbot is able to process this command by giving it to the RESTful APIs. It then takes it to Spotify as a real world application to use for this case, and it then plays it successfully as we see over here. Now, obviously you can't see the demo properly in this case as it's just a static image, but we're gonna actually take a look at some of the things that you can do with it as we install it, as well as taking a look at the research paper to get a better idea for these different types of demos. So stay tuned and let's get to the next step where we take a deeper look as to what RESTful GPT is actually about. Now, we heard this concept called RESTful APIs throughout this video, but what does it actually mean? Well, it's something that stands for representation of state transfer applications for programming interfaces. This is something that is bodily used for different types of frameworks and it's a method for sharing the capabilities as well as the information of web services with its actual application API. So essentially, it's something that serves as a way for different software programs to communicate with each other over the internet through its basic framework. Now, you can think of them as a set of rules or conventions that allow applications to request and exchange data seamlessly. Many people online actually use this for services like Spotify, Twitter, you have Gmail, Notion, Discord, and such forth as RESTful API offers developers to interact with all of these platforms. Now just note that it's not just restricted to these applications, there's many other apps that you can actually use with RESTful API. Now these APIs are typically adhered to a standard called Open APIs specification, which is OAS. This specification outlines the details as to how the API functions, including the operations it supports, as well as the parameters it accepts and the structure of the response it provides. Now, it follows this standard to help ensure that there's a consistency and an ease of integration when developers want to build applications that interact with these services. Let's just take a look at this uh, framework over here, which gives us a better example as to how it operates. You can see it starts off with the user query, which sends it off to the planner agent. This planner agent is then working towards different types of APIs to use in this case. And there is a whole open API specification list over here, which has the API description, the documentation, and the response schema. Now, this API calling plan is then sent to the executor agent. And this executor agent then calls on the RESTful APIs, which sparses it, takes it with the Python code, sends it back to the caller, which is then sent back to the API selector and then given to the user query. This is where the execution result is sent back to the user query through this framework. And that's basically how it operates in simple terms. Now, as we mentioned in the previous section of this video, RESTGPT is actually made up with three different types of agents. You have the planner, you have the API selector as well as the executor. Now, the heart of each component is the use of prompts. And this is where I, I stated at the start, where if you wanna basically customize and get the best use out of this, you will need to input the best prompts with the large language models that you wanna use. But what sets RESTGPT apart from its other types of systems that use the same type of dynamic approach is that the rest GPT uses these different types of agents to adapt to feedback from the environment that it's actually set in. We can see from these different types of agents where we have the planner that breaks down the user instructions into smaller and natural 
uh, language subtask. You have the API selector, which plays a really important role in mapping the subtask created by the planner in case it, that it needs to use different types of API calls. This is something that forms the task plan and goes abroad to, not abroad, but like to a broader spectrum to detail what is actually needed to execute the task. We then have the executor, obviously, which is the one that carries out the RESTful API calls. And this executor is further divided into two modules, which is the caller and the parser, which is something that we saw previously, where the parser is something that generates the Python code that can interpret and handle the responses, whereas the caller is something that reads the complete API documentation and it organizes the necessary parameters for the API call. Now, this dynamic is an aspect that comes into play as a planner is something that continuously plans what is needed to be generated and it gets into the executor, which then works towards the different types of modules to get the generation that is needed. This is how RESTGPT is able to adapt to the changing circumstances and it's something how it makes it actually operational. Now, at the start of the video, we took a look at this example where RESTGPT is used to finding how many times that director is seen in a movie. And this is through the API selector, uh, actually executing the task through different types of movie databases to find the result of how many times that director was actually there. But in this case, we also have RESTGPT with Spotify, which finds you the best uh, for, for making the playlist. For example, in this case, we have other examples where it's able to uh, add Summertime Sadness by Lana Dell into the first playlist. Now, these are just a couple of examples as to what you can do with RESTGPT. There's many other use cases, obviously, and basically using this to execute, uh, implement to your workflow to make it more efficient and more effective in different types of menial tasks that you want to execute. If you have to take a look at this table over here, which shows a comparison of work that augments large language models with API and tool usage, it shows that it denotes API selection with retrieval. And in this case, it's comparing other models like React, yeah, Visual GPT, Hugging GPT, Gorilla, which is a really famous one, as well as GPT for tools. We can see that the amount of APIs and tools with RESTGPT is above all of these others, except Gorilla, obviously. But in terms of extending further with the React GPT, you can definitely do so. Whereas the other ones cannot, uh, in terms of the schema, you have a specialized model with all these, with most of these models, but with REST GPT, you have the RESTful uh, API list. In terms of the framework, it's uh, online, it's course defined, you have feedback, and it's a plug and play feature that is incorporated with REST GPT. Now, many of these other models do not have the same sort of specifications that REST GPT does, and this is why many would actually choose to use REST GPT over these other models. Now, in terms of installing this, it's fairly easy. What you need to do is basically click on this green button on the repository of REST GPT, copy this, clone the repository on your command prompt. Once you have cloned it, you can simply just go down you need to install the Langchain uh, Colorama. And once you have installed that, you can then move forward and start running the Python code as well as the files that are needed. Now, this is just the code that is needed for you to connect and plug and play other types of APIs. In this case, we're installing the Spotify API to basically have it run with RESTGPT. But there's a list of other different APIs that you can connect with the documentation. So if you're interested in that, you can definitely go forward and configure the files afterwards so that you can set it to different APIs. But that's basically a gist in terms of installing it. It's fairly easy. It's a simple command. You just need to run it with the python run.py command. And you just simply need to set it up so that it uses different APIs that you want to work with. But that's basically it for today's video on RESTGPT. This is definitely a very useful and dynamic framework that will be very beneficial for a lot of us. So definitely check this out with all the links in the description below. Make sure you check out the Patreon page if you want to access our private Discord. If you haven't followed World of AI on Twitter, I definitely recommend that you do so so that you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn the notification bell, like this video, and check out our previous videos so you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. But with that thought, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. 
Have an amazing day. Spread positivity. And I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out, fellas.